So today we're going to talk about inheritance. Now inheritance is a way to extend or augment or add to the data types that are already existing in either Java or the ones you create. Okay, so we will use a simple example, but this, I mean, this should be useful even when you want to create uh, new things or new types from even the Java standard types, right? So let's start. So I'm going to create a class called rect, okay? Now this class, like we've seen in the previous video, I'm going to say private int width private int height sorry height and then I'm going to create a constructor which is public and I'm going to say int width int height and that's how we give the values to its variables its class variables that's these guys right this dot width equals width this dot height equals height and now that we have these characteristics one of the things we can do is use this to calculate what is uh, calculate the area right so let's say I want to say int area of course make it public and I'm going to say return width into height right now, let's say we already have this class and this is sort of what we've learned even in a previous video just to create a standalone class. Now, what we want to do is we, we so let's actually before that, let's run an example using this. So rect r1 equals new rect just to make sure that it all works, right? And I'm going to say s out r1 dot area equals one dot area okay let's run this and you should get the area is 200 square units okay now let's say this is what you've had from a previous video or this is what you've been playing with in your own uh, ide okay now you want to augment your program you want to add to it okay it would be a shame if you had to duplicate every single piece of code in something else right so let's say take an this is a sort of a bit of a contrived example but I, I, it kind of drives the point home let's say i want to create a class called a square okay now we know that a square and a rectangle are pretty much the same especially when it comes to the key features like for example calculating the area right the only difference between a rectangle and a square is that the square has the sides equal, right? So a square would have width and height the same, okay? So how would you model this in Java code to sort of reduce the kind of boilerplate code that you write, but still get the functionality that you want, right? So the way you inherit from a, another class that you've created or someone else has created is you say extends rect. Okay, now if you're using IntelliJ, it's actually quite awesome because if you point this, point the cursor to this, it will say this, there is no default constructor available in rect, rect. And the reason there is no default constructor available is because you actually created a constructor yourself. And if you remember from a previous video, I said that when you create your own constructor, Java will not create a default constructor. Just to refresh, what is the default constructor? This is a default constructor, right? A constructor with no arguments. So you could say width equals zero and height equals zero, right? So if I go back to square, now I won't have any errors or issues, right? But this is not what we want. What we want is right now, we want to model, we want all the features from the rectangle, but we want to write as little code as possible. So for that, IntelliJ gives us a suggestion. It says create constructor matching super. So I'll, I'll click on this and then we'll see what this means. Okay. So 
IntelliJ has created a constructor for us. Actually, we didn't need IntelliJ to do it for us. We could have sort of done it ourselves by typing this out exactly. But what this tells us is this square data type extends rectangle, right? That means when you create an object of this square, before the square object gets created, a sub object called of type rectangle or rect gets created, right? And this makes sense because your type builds on another type. So if you think of stacks, the rectangle is at the bottom and your type builds on top of the re rectangle or rect, right? So before we can construct our square, we need to construct a rect. So how do you do that, right? Now, in earlier examples, what you've seen is I've called a constructor using a new expression, right? Now, this is actually one way to call a constructor. Another way to do it is using the, within a class. So you can't use this outside of a class constructor, right? You say super and you pass in the arguments that super needs. Now, who is super? What is super? Super can be, so you can think of super as, I'm just going to use this and do this in a comment. You can think of this line, this whole line here being the same as the, this form, this line. New rect with right. You can think of this line actually being this line. And this we know what this is right so there's no real difference all we are doing here is we are telling this square class that before you create yourself create your super object and if rect had a extends here rect would also have to have a super call here right to create its uh, parent object so this object is called the parent object and this is called the child object or this is called the super class and this is called the derived class. Therefore, this this that's where this name super comes from, right? So now just by writing this amount of code, we've got a new data type, which inherits or extends the rect data type. And rect has a lot of features, which we don't need to duplicate here because we get them by default. So one of the features rect has is, it has a function called area, right? So let's see how this works, okay? So it's clear cut here that when we have a rect, how everything works but let's try it with a square now so i'm going to say square s1 equals new square right but just to tighten this up a square has all sides equal right but what do we have in the constructor here we have two arguments width and height now this doesn't really make sense for a square actually what i could have done was change this and say side and change this and say side and side right so now what will happen is here all i have to do is i can say 25 okay what this does is after this line so literally like here okay after you hit this semicolon what java does is java will create the rect rect uh, create a rect object for us in memory that rect object will have width of 25 and height of 25 after it does that it will then create a square object in memory for us and that square object will have access to all the public and protected stuff that the rect object has so in fact the rect object has a function call or a method instance method to be more precise called area right so we can actually call that here so in fact let me just copy this and change these so i'm going to say s1 okay and i'm going to start typing this out from the beginning just so that you see it if i say dot if you notice it's given me this area function now where did this area function come from so i can double click on that and this area function comes actually from rect right but when you say width and height now the width and the height because i'm talking to this area function from the context of a square 
the width and the height will both be 25. So 25, 25 is a 625, right? So let's see what I get for the area, right? So you see here 625. So as you've seen in this short video, uh, just by using this concept of extends, aka inheritance, right? I need, I sort of needed to write very little code here and assuming this was written by let's say another team member or somebody or even, even you earlier in the life cycle of this whole program you can sort of reuse so much of this stuff in the square just by uh, you know inheriting a particular class right so inheritance at a very high level gives you this kind of uh, power right by doing by writing a little bit of extra code you can extend this and do it right now let's say for example this is going to be silly, but let's just say I wanted to create my own area function, right? And I want to return zero all the time, just because, okay? Now, if I run this program, what should print out, right? Now, what's happened is Java says you are calling s1.area. So Java will first go because this s1 is of type square it will go to the square class this is literally sort of what happens in sort of like indexing is essentially right it will go to the square class in the square class it will check to see whether there's a function called area if there is a function called area that matches the same signature that is it takes no arguments which in this case is true here it will run this function however if it doesn't find a function called area then what it will do is it will look for the extends clause and extends rect so it will go to the rect class then in the rect class it will see that there is a function called area right and then it will run this function called area but these values of width and height will be in the context of a square that means side right so what we've done is we've actually basically really reset these values to be the same so this uh, is an example of how inheritance uh, and the extends keyword can kind of help you uh, eliminate a lot of extra code that you may have to write, okay? So this was just a very high level uh, view of inheritance. Uh, we'll probably go into more detail in future videos, uh, but I think this is good enough to kind of get you started, okay? So thank you and see you in the next one.